So I'm just going to quickly do um, just a little uh, like an overview of the webinar. So we're going to welcome the Commodore. I already chatted about that. I'm just going to go through what a pursuit start is. Okay. Uh, we're going to, we're going to get uh, like, I can just go through how to get a good start and pursuit starts because they're a little bit different than your standard start. Um, I'm going to chat about tactics during pursuit races. Uh, we're going to touch on the list of tips and tricks. You know, these are all one slide guys, so this shouldn't take too, too long this tonight. I'm not going to take too much of your time, uh, but I thought I could give you a little value. And then um, questions at the end. Um, and if, uh, you know, during the question period, if you have some questions, you may not feel uh, like you want to ask them over uh, the Zoom call here. You can always email me. Uh, my email address and everything will be at the, the end of this slideshow. You can always give me a call. Facebook me, Instagram, however you want to get a hold of me, feel free. Uh, but no questions or stupid questions here. All right, so uh, here we go. So this is um, Commodore Welby. This is a great shot of him with an awesome, even better shirt on. Um, you want to just start up, uh, James, and, and kind of chat about the event and any um, housekeeping things you want to you want to get off your chest before the start of Lewisa. Yeah, thank you, Drew, very much. First of all, thank you for doing this for us. We really appreciate it. We're gutted that you're not going to be there in person this year, but I expect you'll be back next year. Uh, things are starting to come into focus. My team is an experienced group of past Commodores, and they've been absolutely exceptional in their planning of this event. Paul Gamori has done a tremendous job planning six full days of racing. Uh, we're going to visit the beautiful Buena Vista Resort. Obviously, everything will be slightly stunted because of COVID-19, but uh, we plan to practice the guidelines of the local areas and make sure that we're two meters apart from distancing. Um, but it looks like a phenomenal program. Uh, the sponsors have stepped up to give us fantastic merch to give us prizes. We have a cocktail contest, a cooking contest, and some fantastic racing. This year, we decided to go with a pursuit format. So it's going to be a very competitive. I see the entrance right now, and it's going to be a competitive fleet. The trophies are absolutely stunning hand carved uh, versions of my logo. So it's a real keepsake for the winners this year, both the racing and spirit awards. I'm just totally psyched and I just want to start the week. And so do Alexa and Indy, my new golden retriever. They both want to join Louisa. It's going to be Indy's first Louisa. All right, thank, thanks a lot, James. Um, James put a lot of effort into last year. And this year, I think you're probably the only two time in a row, uh, Commodore, because I think, uh, as I've heard, the tradition is you have to pass along every year. So uh, big thanks to him. I'm, I'm, a, I'm sorry I'm going to miss it this year, guys. Just does not in the cards. But, uh, yeah, plan is to come back next year. Um, so we're going to get into the uh, slides here. So Pursuit Starts, just kind of what is Pursuit Starts? Um, the purpose of Pursuit Starting System is to apply time on distance rating, so PHRF, corrections at the start of each at the start of the race instead of calculating the corrections after the finish thus the fleet will finish in a simple place order and within a relatively narrow time span if everything works out correctly so basically um there's a, there's a nice picture over the right of, of a nice dinner during Louisa there um probably preparing and planning the time for their pursuit start the next day uh but basically everyone kind of starts in order um you start the slowest uh, to the fastest and then first one to finish wins. Um, so the key points, just kind of what I covered there. Um, slowest boat's going to start first. So if you know your PHRF rating or you're not the quickest boat out there, chances are you're going to be starting first. Or you're probably going to be want to be first off anchor and over towards the start line. Um, and the fastest boat's going to start last. So if you're the fastest boat, which might have been that Deller 39 I saw back there with uh, my buddy Quinn. Um, and his father, um, you're probably, you know, you probably have a little more time in the morning to have a nice little breakfast, maybe what they're having in that picture. Um, so it's a race to the finish line. So basically once you've started, you're want to be the first one to the finish line. First one to the finish line wins. So first to finish wins the race, second to second and, you know, so on and so on. So it's a, it's a real race to the finish line, um, which kind of makes the sailing a little bit more competitive. And, you know, I'm going to go through a few, kind of tactical things here in a little bit on, on how to try to get to that finish line uh, first. 
So I think I first wanted to start off with like, you know, how to get a good start in pursuit racing. So it's, okay. it's kind of it's nice that, um, that uh, in pursuit racing, no one, uh, it, unless there's another boat that's identical to your PHF rating or the speed of your boat or the handicap of your boat, you're going to have a, the starting line basically all to yourself. If not, you might have one or two boats, you know, around you, maybe starting slightly before you, slightly after you, maybe at the same time if, if there is a second boat identical to yours. Um, so one thing that I find I was thinking about would be really important is having one crew member responsible for knowing the start time as soon as they are announced. Okay, so every leg is going to have different um, distances. And that, that will correlate to when you're going to be starting in the morning. Um, so the slowest boat is going to be the first to start, which would usually be, say, if it's an early start, 9 or 10. Um, maybe if it's the last day and, and, they, and uh, there's good winds, you might get a later start. Uh, but the time will change depending on the starting time and the distance of the leg. So you want to have one crew member responsible for knowing the starting time. And you should allocate that person to the start of the week. Let them own it and let them make sure that, you know, you can organize yourself properly in the mornings uh, to get yourself off anchor and to get yourself to the start line in time so you're not late for your start. Um, one thing that I find is always usually uh, pretty good is to get out early and to warm up. So I always find it's important not just to get off the anchor, be, have your breakfast, get whatever else you do in the morning going, and then get out to the race course and not just start. You want to get your sails up. You want to have a little bit of a shakedown, maybe wake up a little bit, do a couple of tacks, do a couple of jobs, maybe put the kite up, put the kite down, just get everyone ready for the day. Maybe if you're, you know, if you're sailing around an island early in the start, you might want to go poke the bow around the island, see where the wind's coming from around that. Those type of things you can do uh, if you get out early and warm up. Um, I've been out there, you know, I've been out there many years. And there's been a couple of times where we haven't got out early. We haven't warmed up and it definitely cost us at some point in the race just because we weren't as prepared as we could have been. Um, one thing is, so if there's 15, 20, 25 boats, there's a start line and there's going to be boats starting every couple minutes. So one thing you don't want to do, and it's probably not going to be very popular, would be warming up around the start line. So get out there, warm up, get, kind of identify where the start line is, uh, but don't be crowded in the start line because these, you know, the, if, if you're a faster boat and you're out there warming up and there's a bunch of boats starting, the last thing you want to be doing is crossing the middle of the start line while they're starting, they're starting their race. Okay. Um, another thing I would like, so you're, you are out there by yourself, but I still feel like you should treat it or your chances are you're going to be starting relatively, you know, either alone or around one or two other boats. So for the same time, I really feel like you should treat it as a normal start. So saying that you want to figure out, you know, which end of the starting line is favored. You know, if there's current going with you, current going against you, uh, where you want to head after the start, just because you, you know, no one's around you and you just get a start at your own time doesn't mean you should just loudly gag off that start line and, and just start going, waiting for the rest of the fleet to catch up. You can take advantage of the start line because uh, you have lots of room. Make sure you start the favorite on the line and make sure you have a game plan to get, you know, upwind or downwind from the start line uh, to your next destination. Um, I think you can kind of come into the starting box. And, and what I mean by starting box is probably like, 10 boat lengths, um, or maybe five to 10 boat lengths, depending on how many boats are out there, um, up from the start line. So kind of like away from course side. Um, and I would start entering that box three to five minutes before your start. So you can really get close to the start just in case the wind dies. Um, or if you have an issue with the boat, you know, if your engine uh, putters out, if you are, you know, in that starting box, three to five minutes, you can toss your sails up. You can you can get to the start line. You're not going to be late for your start. So, so you know, I'd say around three to five minutes, start bringing yourself closer to that start. Don't go park yourself in the middle of the start line and watch the other boats pass you and like kind of cheer them on. That's kind of nice, but they probably wouldn't appreciate that. I'd say stay back a little bit until it is you know within a minute of your start. But but you know, start moving in when you know you know that the the race is you know your your start is about five minutes away. Um, staying out of the way of other boats start, starting before you. I've kind of brought that up a few times. It's, it's something that does happen in pursuit racing, especially if the anchorage is you're sailing towards the anchorage um, at the start of the race um, and people are still coming out of the race and you're one of the slower boats. So if, if you can, just try to stay out of, out of the start line. If you're, you know, with it, at, you know, if, you're, if your starting time isn't five minutes uh, roughly and, and if, if you do see boats starting and you're making that way up towards 
the start line or you've drifted down for whatever reason, try to get out of their way because they are racing and you are not. Um, I, I touched base on this, have a game plan, which, which end of the start line you want to start on. So unless the start is completely square, which, you know, I, I put full, um, I, I would think, you know, most uh, start lines I've sailed in Louisa, I've been relatively square, but usually there's one that's slightly more favorable than the other due to the wind or the current. Um, and I would usually try to pick one to start nearby. You know, you don't need to be right off it. You're not, you don't need to win the start technically, but making sure you're closer to the favored end with, you know, on the, on the start whistle on your time exactly, or within, you know, five seconds of getting off that start line. Um, stay off the course side of the start line. So when you are warming up, all the boats are going to be starting and, and you know, heading down course or, or up course, depending which way you're going. Just, just stay off that side where the boats are coming. You know, if you're coming out of an acreage, it might be difficult to. But if you're if you're out there warming up, stay stay up above the start line and don't be on the course side of the start line. Um, and you know, one last thing is, you know, you should be you should have no excuse because there's no other boats around you to have full speed at the start. So something that I kind of practice to kind of figure out how to get full speed at the start would be. Uh, time on distance so you would kind of time yourself away from a buoy or a navigational mark and and you try to see if you can get up to full speed and how long and how much distance and how long it takes to get up to full speed because you're if you're up at full speed at the start with all the sails you want to have up um it's going to give you the best chance to get down the course you know the quickest so, so I just wanted to touch base on some tactics during pursuit starts. You can see John over here probably calling some tactics back to his father. Um, you could, you know, staying in front of the boats behind you. So that's a big thing. So once you're out in, once you're out in front of boats, if there's boats behind you, so if you're, if you're not the fastest boat out there, you're always going to have a boat behind you. You're going to want to keep them behind you. Um, it's almost like a one design race once you're all on course, because technically you're all finished. You need to finish you know, relatively at the same time, or you need to beat every other boat on the course. So one thing you can do is you can tack on them. Okay. So you can, you can kind of take their wind or, or make sure they're not going to pass you by tacking on them. Um, if you're heading downwind, so kind of the opposite, you don't want them to jive on top of your wind. So you're going to want to be careful of boats coming in behind you with their spinnakers up or, or even their white sails and not getting on top of your wind. Uh, you want to be prepared for sail changes. So a lot of time in Louisa, you rip around islands, rip around rocks, rip around shoals. Um, a lot of times you're going upwind, you're going downwind, you're going, you're reaching. Um, and usually there's a few different directions that the boat's going. Uh, and sometimes it, the wind changes depending on what part of the lake you're at. Um, so you want to be ready for sail changes. So, you know, things like that would be, you know, if, if you are peeling jibs and you have multiple jibs you use during the day, depending on the wind strength, you want to make sure you have those flaked and ready downstairs to go. Um, if you have a kite, you may you want to make sure that kite is packed and all the tapes are run. Okay, those little things can just help you uh, be more prepared for when the wind does change or your angle changes to the wind and you need to change sails. If the sails are prepared, you're going to have a better chance it's going to all happen a little quicker. Um, also, anticipate competitors' moves. So, you know, as as a slower boat, like I um, I sailed on uh, altered state a few times last year and we were doing these pursuit starts. Um, there are boats coming up behind us and I would definitely be anticipating their moves coming up behind us to try to make sure that they stayed behind us. So if I saw them like gaining over on a certain part of uh, say a, a leg, I would make my way over there. If I saw them losing on that part of the leg, I'd probably stay away from that. At the same time, the boats ahead of you can also, um, you know, give you uh, indications on what's happening ahead of you. So if you see a kite go down, um, you know, you've seen the kite go down, that means the wind has changed. You're probably gonna wanna make sure that your Genoa, your head sail is ready to, ready to go back up or on roll. And you're gonna wanna make sure your crew's ready to take the spinnaker down close to the same location that the, the kite that you saw go down. Um, so those, those are kind of some tips that I think trying to stay, keep, stay in front or keep boats behind you. Um, and some tips to, or some tactics to like pass boats ahead of you is you want to jive on them. So if or, or, or you want to you want to take their wind. So if you're heading downwind, you want to put your boat behind their boat so your boat can steal the wind. And a wind shadow 
you'd be surprised how much it does, especially over a day. You know, it, most of these races are 30, you know, I would say, what, four or five hours long most of the time. Uh, so getting in behind a boat and stealing their wind, even though if it's for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you're definitely going to make a difference. Uh, use shifts to your advantage. So, um, you know, Lewis is in, the lake isn't super shifty, but there are definitely shifts out there, especially some geographical shifts around some land masses. So you want to make sure, um, you know, keeping your eyes out. And as I said, the other boats, if you see they're getting knocked, you know, you're probably going to want to tack. Um, if you see they're getting lifted, you're probably going to want to follow in behind them. So making sure you're using the lifts and knocks to your advantage. Um, you know, passing boat ed, you have your crew is, uh, has better crew work. Chances are, if you're getting sales up and down, if you're having better tags, if you're having better jobs, you know, there's a better chance of you passing the boats ahead of you. Um, and then also proper sail selection, you know, um, putting on 150% you know up on a day that it's blowing 15 knots um is probably not the best sales selection for the day or using your really big kite on a day that it's really windy is probably not the best sales selection sometimes if it's super windy it might the best sales selection might be just to go um like white sail you know and and get down the course and other boats might not be able to control their spinnaker if it's too windy um at the same time light air you're going to want your largest head sail on there you know, one of your largest kite, you're going to have your one of the lightest kite. So making sure you have the proper selection for the day of racing, because there is six days of racing. You usually see a little bit of everything. So um, to try to pass boats ahead of you, making sure you have the proper sails on is definitely going to help you get towards that start line as quick as possible. Uh, moving on to Lewisa tips and tricks. So I have been lucky to have been invited out to this race twice now, I think. Or last year, my third year. Definitely twice, um, and I've had a lot of fun. Um, and I've it's a totally different style of racing. Like just the whole lake, you rip around islands. It's day races. You end up in an anchorage. You have a great night. You wake up the next morning, and you're off competing again. Um, so some little tips and tricks that I've I've picked up from whatever my 18 days or 12 to 18 days of racing with you guys. Um, you want to have one crew member designated to navigation and watch out for rocks. So I, I definitely put altered state up on the rocks last year. Um, and the one reason was that was we didn't really have a crew member designated to navigation. We were a little bit shorthanded, not making any excuses. We just, we were trimming and the whole fleet was coming in behind us and I was driving and um, Kelly was trimming and we just basically ran aground because we didn't have someone designated for navigation. Uh, he has a cousin that usually sails with him, Neil. Uh, Neil was one of, is one of the best navigators I've ever seen. I'm sure a lot of people on this call are just as good. He whips out like an old um, classic map and he, navigational map, and he can just, he does everything by hand um, and degrees. And it, it's pretty impressive. And he kind of, he's been around the lake for a long time. So he knows where a few more of the rocks are uh, than I do at least. Um, but I just think like designating one crew to navigation will really help you keep you off the rocks um, or at least the bus stop. Um, map the route before heading out to the start line. So make sure you know where your course is. I, you know, I was lucky to have Neil and Kelly kind of know the lake and do a lot of these races and they would, they would sort that out before the start. So a lot of the time I'd be on the boat calling tactics, but I really didn't have an idea. I'd be like, which Island are we going around? You'd see three islands. And sometimes that was a little confusing. So I think if I kind of one crew member mapped out the route, then you sat down with the whole crew and just chatted about the islands that you're going around and where you're starting and where you're finishing. Um, that could just help everyone on the boat just try to stay on the same page during the race. Um, as I said previously, be prepared for all wind directions and strengths. Have all sails ready to go. So just, um, you know, you get a little bit of everything in Lewisa. Usually, uh, you know, it's usually on different days, but some days it starts light and ends up heavy. Some days it's heavy and ends up light. Um, so just be prepared for that. Um, use other boats to let you know what's happening in front of you. So it's usually a fairly large fleet and, um, you know, chances are there's going to be a boat ahead of you and a boat behind you. Use those boats as identification of what's kind of happening around the lake, especially on the light wind days. Um, it can really help you keeping your head out of the boat and looking to see who's, who's doing what and who's being successful and who's, who's not doing so well and kind of putting that into your game plan. Um, never give up. You know, I, I think a couple of times we've come around the corner and the whole 
the whole thing's been shut off right before the start line and boats have just been sitting there like you're like literally rounding the corner of an island praying that no other boats have finished yet which isn't the nicest thing but it's just a competitive thing to do and you roll right up in behind them with no win uh so never give up because you never know what's going to be around the next corner in the Lissa. um have fun i think that's probably the number one tip for uh for the list it's pretty hard not to have fun on the list um and then anchor and raft up properly uh make sure you know you're making proper uh safe anchor anchorages and make sure you're rafting up properly and especially if the wind is picking up um i think you know anyone going to the list is going to have a blast i recommend it to anybody on um this webinar or listening to this webinar in the future this webinar will be recorded um, I highly recommend it. I'm excited to get back next year. Um, and I, I'm sure everyone will have a blast um, blast this year. Um, so I just want to thank everyone uh, for showing up to this webinar today. Um, I appreciate all your time. I definitely didn't want to keep anyone too long today. Hopefully um, everyone got a little tip or, tip or trick uh, out, of my, out of my chat. Maybe you'll get off, get off the start line with speed and on time. I think that's the main key for that one. And just want to end it with a beautiful little picture of a, of a proper raft up uh, here, probably close to close to evening or after dinner here, the way the wind looks. Um, I'm going to open it up for any questions. I've got a chat. I had a chat going here. I've got a chat. If anyone wants to, um, anyone wants to throw a chat in there, I'll answer a question. James Wellsby asked, uh, you can fly the spinner. Can you fly the spinner? Spinnaker over the start line uh, during the racing rules. Yes, you can fly the spinnaker. Uh, you can have it up and like just roar, roaring towards the start line. That's a little dangerous. Um, but the same thing is there's not many boats going to be around you. So chances are a boat can't foul you and, and head you up. So if you can do your time on distance, get that kite up and roar towards that start line and be at full speed. Um, thanks, John. Miss you, buddy. Thank, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, and I know, you know, I think there was a lot more people signed up for this. I think a lot of people may have uh, may have had other obligations. Um, I'm, I'm going to record this and send this out to James. James can forward this over uh, to everyone in the fleet, and uh, it's going to be available on YouTube. So you can pull it up uh, if, if people do want to reference it or, or uh, pass along.